Hello everybody, this is Gregory with the Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna talk about 80s teen icon Molly Ringwald talking about how she almost got two iconic roles and ultimately why she did it. Now before we begin, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so these episodes come fresh to you and post a comment. So Molly Ringwald, um, she was a seminal figure in my life given the, the age similarities. I am 50 years old, she's 56. And of course, she was iconic in the John Hughes directed movies of the mid 80s, most notably 16 Candles and Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. And then after that, in the late 80s, early 90s, she had trouble getting roles. And we'll talk about that in a second. We'll even quote her. I remember her even before 16 Candles or Breakfast Club because she was in The Facts of Life. So The Facts of Life had that classic cast of Lisa Welchell and Kim Fields, like the four girls. But before that, the first season, they had a bigger cast before they got rid of most of those girls and had the original four with Mrs. Garrett. But one of the original characters was Molly Ringwald. So ultimately that was good for her because she got these these John Hughes movies. Well, she's got an interview in Variety Magazine, which is a relatively big magazine, now it's online. And she talks about how she was in talks for much more mature roles in the late 80s, early 90s. And in fact, how she almost got the role uh, that was ultimately given to Melanie Griffith in the movie Working Girl, in that she says that Mike Nichols, the famous director of The Graduate and among other movies, including Working Girl, didn't give it to him because she was a little too young. And then she talks about how, I'll, I even quote her, she says, I got really close in a couple movies. I met with Mike Nichols for Working Girls and Jonathan Demme for Silence of the Lamb, but ultimately I was too young. Well, Griffin was happy because Griffin was 11 years older. She's Dakota Johnson's mom, and she ultimately got Academy Award nomination for that movie. Why? I don't know. There's nothing special she does in that movie. I've talked about it in the episode, like the, the seemly, seemly past of the shady past of Melanie Griffith. She's not that good of an actress. But then later on, a couple years later, Molly Ringwald says she was a, a casted or almost casted to play Clarice Starling in Silence of the Lambs. And of course, that ultimately went to Jodie Foster, who was five years older than her at the time. And it's just kind of laughable to me, the idea of Molly Ringwald as Clarice Starling. Now, you know, Jodie Foster was a child actor. She has been acting since she was like five, six years old. And you know, she definitely, like, like Ringwald, but Ringwald did more commercials and so forth before she did her John Hughes movies. But Jodie Foster, course was a much better actress i mean even to the point where mark chapman the guy who shot john lennon had a fixation on on uh, on her but that's to say just the idea of of molly ringwald having that role that ultimately ultimately jodie foster got an academy award for her. she had back-to-back academy awards i think people forget that now you know she's got she's a little more relevant now with niad she got an academy award nomination for that movie that was led by annette benning as the swimmer and in that movie i don't think either of them were doing anything special but you know i'm not in the academy but the idea that uh, that she would be clarice is just i mean what what kind of movie would that have been you know it's to say like I don't think Molly Ringwald had any talent. I think Molly Ringwald didn't really have a lot of talent. And how do you see this borne out? You see this borne out by her career, right? Like with anything, you look at the facts, you look at the stats, and you look, she had a hard time after after the John Hughes movies. She did the pickup artist. Some of you might remember that. That was a Robert Downey Jr. led. That's kind of his first rom-com. Uh, that movie was a tank. She tried to do... Uh, more like mature movies and, and as she was growing up. And remember, when she did 16 Candles, she was 16. I mean, the woman was young. She was like Debbie Gibson, you know, if you remember the old teen pop star. You know, they started so young that I think it was hard for her to get her bearings. And I just think that both of these movies would not have worked with Molly Ringwald. Molly Ringwald was never able to break out of that teen mold. And even later on, when you see her playing a lot of mom roles, like on ABC Family and stuff like that, you, know, you could see that, okay, this fits her a little better, but she can never be a leading actress. Now, she thinks being part of the Brat Pack, and you guys know the Brat Pack, that was that kind of, a, a term that none of the Brat Packers like. If you listen to like Rob Lowe and Andrew McCarthy and uh, Charlie Sheen and, 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 and Demi Moore and all these Brat Packers, they hated that term. That term was actually, coined by 
a interview that that a guy did of these of these actors. I think it was during Sinema's Fire, and then he was going to coin that term, and then it kind of just stuck with them. And they hated that term because, understandably so, as they got older and wanted to do more adult movies. They were always, oh, you're a brat packer, you're a brat packer. And then most recently, she's been like on, on Feud, Capote versus the Swans. She had a little movie in the Dahmer, the Dahmer television show. And then she had a cameo in The Bear. And to be honest, I, I don't know why she's even having an interview for Variety or even relevant. The other thing that she, she admitted to that kind of made me laugh is that she said her daughter was conceived at Studio 54. Now you're like, oh, how risque, at the coat, like the coat room of Studio 54. And you're like, okay. All right, that can be considered risque if it was like 1976 and Andy Warhol is there and like at the peak, Jerry Hall's there, you know, the, the peak of Studio 54, which is was cocaine and dancing and all these things. You see Whit Stillman kind of portray that, that world in the last days of disco and, you know, great time. But <laughs> but this is in 2003. It's like nobody cares about Studio 54 in 2003. She's like, oh, I conceived my my child with my, with my boyfriend at the time in the coat room of Studio 54. In 2003, who cares at that point? Either way, Molly, I wish you the best. Um, I think you always be in my heart. You know, e even in those movies, like Brat, the Brat Pack movies, the Hughes movies, like she was never really that attractive. And I don't even know if she was a good actress, but I think, you know, her and Hughes had this really strange relationship. It was not sexual, but Hughes is kind of, was kind of, he died in 2009, but he was kind of known to be a little like, eh. and they had a very strange relationship, but, but, for whatever reason, Ringwald was an effective muse for John Hughes's writing, but you know she had a moment. People will remember her. Like for, I'll always remember her because of her little window in the mid '80s. But ultimately, I think history has panned out that she's not that good of an actress. Guys, post in the comments. I like to hear from you. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.